Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the applause. Have you ever stood in a quiet room and clapped like this just to hear the echo that bounced back? Now imagine clapping, but there is no echo, just silence. That's the reality of space. But what if I told you, even in that silence, the space is echoing back a warning? These are silent echoes, not of sound, but of consequence. They're not from distant galaxies, but from our own actions. Echoes of every rockets launched, every satellite abandoned, mission that didn't plan for what's left behind. Yes, I'm talking about space debris. How many of you heard about space debris before? Not in a science fiction movie, but in a real life, as a real threat. We speak so much about climatic change, air pollution, plastic in the oceans. But when was the last time we spoke about the pollution over our heads? Exactly. We don't feel that directly yet. It doesn't sting our lungs. We don't see it floating in rivers. But what if I said to you, very tools we rely on our everyday life, internet, GPS, phones, military security, all are quietly hanging on this fragile threats of space infrastructure. And these threats are at a risk of snapping. The United Nations officially declared the space debris as an astronomical threat for future generations as per the report Long-Term Sustainability for Outer Space Activities, published in 2022. Now let me give you clarity. Right now, over 130 million of space debris ranging from different satellites to tiny metal shards are operating and orbiting at a speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour. Even a small paint ship at that speed can shatter a spacecraft window and damage a critical satellite. As a space scientist, I've always been fascinated by how we build, how we innovate, how we reach farther. But what is the point of innovation without responsibility? That question changed me. Innovation without ethics is just ego. What we learn, what we discover must be applied for a course. And this is a course. Today I talk about how recent innovations in robotics, artificial intelligence, Orbital predictions, space propulsion. These are not just cool tech buzzwords. They are tools. Tools for ethical action, for space sustainability, for preserving the celestial frontier for our children and their children may one day call home. It's not just a space scientist concern. It's a humanity level concern. Today, I invite you to listen, not just my words, but the silent echoes of space debris and the louder call for action they are becoming. When we look up at the stars in wonder, we must look up with responsibility. So now that we have heard the warning, the silent echoes, let's zoom out for a moment and understand exactly what's happening up there. Because it's not a science fiction, it's a science fact. Right now, we have over 10,000 active satellites orbiting the planet Earth. And an over additional 20,000 different or large satellites, non operational, dead drifting machines still hanging above us. That's like parking broken cars in a freeway and walking away. As just I mentioned, over 130 million of space debris, including 36,000 objects which are larger than 10 centimeter, over 1 million in between 1 to 10 centimeter, 
hundreds of thousands of particles less than 1 cm. Each particle traveling at a speed of 7.5 km per second. That is 7 times faster than a bullet. Yes, we have created a cosmic junkyard. And the worst part is, there is no space generator to clean it up. These fragments don't burn up. They stay there, circling Earth. For decades, sometimes centuries. Let's discuss about Kessler syndrome, a scientific phenomenon in a very simple way. Imagine a domino effect when one satellite hit another, that collision creates fragments, which then hit more satellite, which even creates more fragments. A runaway chain reaction. Eventually, we could reach a point where our low Earth orbit become too crowded and dangerous to access. The space would become unusable. So what are we going to do? And guess what? We are already at the beginning of this nightmare. This is, this is not just a science theory, it's a science fact and it's already happening. In 2009, a Russian inactive satellite collided with a US communication satellite. And result, 2000 debris created in seconds. In 2021, Russia's anti-satellite test destroyed one of its own satellite and created 1500 debris. Similar incidents have been reported with other nations as well. Just this year, the, the astronauts aboard the International Space Station had to take shelter because of a dangerous debris threat was passing close. This is, these are not just isolated events. These are patterns. A growing graveyard in orbit. A graveyard we are building. Are you still wondering how this is going to affect you? Every time you check Google Maps, internet banking, the banking transactions, alerts on natural disasters, making phone calls, weather forecast, you're using satellite. If they go down, so does our infrastructure. This is not just a concern for scientists or astronauts. This is an Earth problem. If we lose safe access to space, our dreams of space exploration, space tourism, asteroid mining, lunar expedition become fantasies. When I started, began speaking publicly about this, one of my interview clips went a bit, bit viral. I w it was just me explaining why space debris mitigation is crucial. And beneath the clip, someone commented, oh, this guy, has this guy studied all this just to go clean trash in space. It's sting. But I smiled. Because that comment revealed something in deeper. Not just ignorance, but lack of awareness. A reflection of how distant space feels to many people. And the truth is, the space is no longer distant. It's here, in your pocket, in your car, in your home. And cleaning space is not easy. It's not like picking plastic from a beach. This is in zero gravity, no oxygen, radiation exposure, and high velocity fragments orbiting nonstop. In the past few years, the private companies began launching mega constellation of satellites, thousands of satellites at once. We are expected to have over 80,000 satellites in orbit by 2030. This is an exponential growth, faster than our ability to clean or regulate. The more the crowded it becomes, the higher the risk of collisions. That's why our mission at Earth 
to remove space debris and make space sustainable is gaining attention. People are beginning to understand space sustainability isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. As I mentioned earlier, we're using the latest technologies of artificial intelligence, robotics, laser technologies, and space propulsion for this ethical mission to be the custodians of the sky. Because we, don't, we owe it not for just ourselves, but for the next generation, we'll look up and ask, what did they leave for us? So who needs to be inspired? I would say everyone. The young minds from the universities, the engineers who, are, who wants to work in this niche area, the policy makers, the government organizations. Because space protection is not a one-man job. It's a collective mission. We need thinkers, doers, believers, people who see innovation as a status. Not as a status, but as a service. I began this talk with a thought. In space, there is no echo. Today, let's be the echo. Let's be the voice where there was silence. Let's act before the debris drown our dreams. Let's clean up the celestial canvas before we paint the future. Because this planet, this sky, this universe, is not just a background for progress. It's a sacred responsibility. Let's honor it together. Thank you.